Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Hope, and today I am going to do a book tag. Um, this is a newer book tag. It was created by Jess at Peace Love Books, and it is a historical romance readers book tag. So I thought this is going to be a really good one for me, and I'm excited to talk about it. So this is a 13 question book tag, and it just goes through a lot of things about historical romance, which, duh. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right in. Question number one is, what is the first historical romance that you ever read? I don't remember. I remember like reading it, but I don't remember the name of the book. So when I was in high school, I was kind of reading adult books. So I would go to the library with my mom like once a week and we would check out books. And I picked up this one book and I didn't really know that it was an adult historical romance at the time. I just thought it was like a book and it sounded interesting. And it was like set in Texas and it was like a girl and a guy I think they'd been childhood friends and they first like you know decided they kind of wanted to be together and it was kind of the story of that that's really all that I remember I remember that the first like sex scene in that book they were in like a field of blue bonnets which seems very Texas to me now um, back then I didn't realize it was like Texas but yeah it sounds very Texas to me now um, I know in like spring and summer there's a ton of blue bonnets in Texas so whatever that is the first one that I ever read and I remember liking it and it kind of got me into the genre a little bit but now I definitely don't really read books set in Texas I have nothing against them it's just I prefer England to America so what is the last historical romance that you read and that one is Some Like It Wild by Teresa Medeiros this is the story of Pamela and Pamela's mother has just died she is trying to find the like long lost heir to this dukedom or at least someone to pose as that and connor is a highwayman and he kind of jumps in decides to do it and this is their love story i'm going to talk about this book a little bit more in a different video so i'm not going to give you away a lot here but this is the last one that i read it's really cute it also has a beautiful step back yes so I love the lime green. I feel like lime green is not a super popular color. So I've had this for a really long time, but now I would have picked it up just because of the step back. But I did enjoy it. Question number three is, who is an underrated historical romance author that you wish more people read? So one that I have just started getting into a little bit is Ella Quinn. I've read a couple of her books. One is coming out later this year that I'm pretty excited to read as well. Another is Karen Rainey. I just picked up a Karen Rainey book recently. And it was another one that I had in my collection for a while, and I actually ended up really liking it. So I would like to see them get a little bit more attention. Uh, I, too, am guilty of not always reading like underrated authors. A lot of the time, I just pick up books by authors that I know or books that I'm like looking for, but I really am trying to branch out, and I think that those two are great. I know Karen Rainey has a ton of books out already i think they're mostly like scottish historicals and eloquin has quite a few as well i did not find very many when i went to the bookstore the other day or i would have picked some up question number four is who is a historical romance author that you haven't read yet but need to so that is going to be right now megan frampton i just got one of her books on my kindle that i read that i won in a goodreads giveaway it's like tall duke and dangerous i think um, but i'm planning on starting that at some point this week maybe i have it um it just kind of depends on my mood but i am kind of planning on at least starting to read that and i am happy about that i've never read any of her books before but i have heard good things and seen some good reviews question number five is like what historical romance authors would you recommend to people who are new to the genre so I think right now Julia Quinn is probably like in the forefront of people who are new to the genre just because Bridgerton came out and I think that that's a great place to start. I would also recommend like Tessa Dare. I think that her books are a little bit lighter. I think that they're very quick reads and they're very quirky and fun. Another one that I would recommend is Stephanie Lawrence. I love Stephanie Lawrence novels. I am obsessed with the Sinister series. I'll probably have said that a hundred times but I love reading them and I think that if you follow like a large family like that, you kind of get a lot of the intricacies of like the ton and everything else without having to be a little bit lost. And I think that you also get some of like the balls and like the like stuff that kind of makes those Regency historicals. I also think Lisa Kleypas is a good place to start. Um, her books are also quite easy to read. The characters are quite likable. So something like that I think if you're more into American type romances I think Beverly Jenkins is great hers are all set in the United States so if you are more interested in reading about your area I think she's a really good place to start I also know that there's like a lot of like Western romances and stuff that's not particularly my style but that 
is a really popular genre, so you could also look into things like that, especially if you want to be in the United States. Question six is, what is your favorite historical romance of all time? And I think that is such a hard question. How do you even pick? So I do have two here with me that I'm a huge fan of and that I've reread multiple times. So the first one is going to be by Stephanie Lawrence. It is the capture of the Earl of Glen Cray, and it is one of the sinister daughters, Angelica, and a Highland Laird who is also the who is also an Earl. And again, I'll talk about this one in another one as well, but this is one of my absolute favorites. It's so much fun. Angelica is such a good heroine. Dominic the Earl is also a fantastic character. He's so tortured. I really like it. The other one that I have here is The Highwayman by Kerrigan Byrne. I really like this. I recently discovered Kerrigan Byrne and I have already bought like three more books. I really like this one. It is again a very tortured hero and a heroine who is like really strong, really self-assured, and also just like really fun. This book has a lot of angst in it. I think that is going to be something that we see in a lot of Kerrigan Byrne books. I'm already reading another one and it also has a lot of angst. So keep that in mind. The prologues are the prologues of these are rough, okay? But still good. So those two are some of my favorites right now. They're the first ones that came to mind with this question. I have probably had the capture of the Earl of Glen, Glen Cray for like, I don't even know how many years. And I've just started reading Kerrigan Byrne, but I can already tell that she's gonna be one of my favorites. Question seven is, do you prefer new or old school historical romance? And I think that is a little bit of a difficult question for me. So when Jess was explaining it, she said, do you like romance from the 80s or 90s or more romances written today? I don't really have very many romances from the 80s or 90s, but I do like some of the ones from the early 2000s. So that's one of those things. I do enjoy the early 2000s romances, but... I do probably enjoy books that are written more recently, so in the last like 10 to 15 years as like a newer book. Um, like I said, I don't really read the ones that are like very old, like 70s, 80s, even mostly 90s. I do, so I guess I do enjoy a little bit of a newer romance. Just I feel like they're a little bit less problematic. Sometimes, sometimes like you can definitely find problematic books that are newer, but I feel like they're also a lot sexier now, which I could be wrong about that. It might be just that I haven't read a lot of super sexy ones that are older, but I just feel like a lot of the time the they're just sexier. The sex scenes are better. I do like I was reading some of Stephanie Lawrence's sinister books. I read Devil's Bride, which is like the first of those and like A Rogue's Proposal, which is another early one, one of the first six. And like compared to the newer ones, like no, like the, I think the characters are much better. I think that like the way that they go about their courtships and everything are so much better. So I prefer kind of the smuttiness of new ones as well. Um, and that's totally a personal choice, I think. But for me, I mean, I have to say newer, newer, newish like within the last 10 to 15 years are probably the ones that I gravitate toward. Question number eight is what are your favorite historical romance tropes? And for me, that is definitely like the Regency type of romance, meaning that we're like, you know, in England and there's some sort of overarching mystery in what is going on. Someone's trying to kill you. You're trying to find something. You're solving some kind of something. Maybe they're like cops or something, you know, like Bow Street Runners, Scotland Yard, something like that. Um, I definitely like the drama and the intrigue of those. I like to have a lot going on to kind of keep me really engaged. Um, sometimes I do enjoy just like a, you know, happy little like this is our story, but I do like having some kind of darker, grittier story going on in the background just because I, for me it makes it more interesting. I also like enemies to lovers. It's very different, um, I think, enemies to lovers in historical romance than enemies to lovers in contemporary. It's more... It's not like that huge hatred where they're just doing terrible things to each other, at least in my experience. You just get kind of the the issues that kind of stem from just their lives and the women a lot of times don't want someone who's going to control them, but the men are quite controlling, but then they end up finding that happy medium. I also enjoy the ones where like the man is the one who knows, like 
I like I love her we're gonna be together like this is what's gonna happen and the woman is like eh, no and then they have to go on and like kind of convince them and work out their relationships I like that I also kind of enjoy like highwaymen and stuff like that I kind of like the bad boys type thing I think that's a trope that I like in any type of romance but especially in historicals and especially lately I've been reading quite a few like highwaymen type romances and I've been here for them so it's that's working for me right now question number nine is what are your favorite historical romance settings so for me that is going to be england like specifically london in the ton so that is going to be like the aristocracy so i enjoy you know all the stuff like i enjoy the balls the walk the walks in hyde park like all max i enjoy all of that type of stuff and i also really like scotland i don't particularly care for like medieval romances or anything but i do like scotland just at even if it's like english like people are in scotland i like the setting of scotland i live in scotland for a while so it has a very special place in my heart i definitely enjoy the scottish setting and then london ballroom type setting um, of course i do read other things but those are my two like favorites those are my go-to's Question 10 is what is the oldest historical romance that you own? And I think that that is Devil's Bride by Stephanie Lawrence. It is from, I think, I want to say 1998. Yeah, published in March 1998. This is definitely one of the oldest ones that I have. I don't collect super old ones, even though I think that like oftentimes they're extremely stunning. I just haven't really gotten into that. Maybe one day I will. So right now my oldest one is like, you know, just over 20 years old and almost published in 2000. So I do enjoy these, but I will say the covers for some of the old ones, these are not my favorite, but I will show you the back because I'm like, uh, yes, look at this. He looks like Dracula. He looks like a vampire. I'm trying to get it a little bit closer so you can see it without. Yeah, it kind of looks like for me, this could be a paranormal romance backdrop as well. Um, anyway, so this is my oldest one. Uh, it's not that old. It's not that old, but it is my oldest. So question 11 is, what is your favorite step back that you own? And that is going to be When a Scott Ties the Knot by Tessa Dare. I think this one is absolutely stunning. I think all of her um, Castles Ever After step backs are just absolutely beautiful. But this one is my favorite. I love the colors. I love the setting. I love like the little plaid ribbon in her hair. Like I'm so here for this. I'm gonna look at that. Look at the color of her dress. Look at the little plaid ribbon in her hair and his little plaid kilt that matches the little castle in the background like I think this one is just absolutely beautiful um, like I said this whole this whole series has fantastic setbacks but this one is my absolute favorite I feel like I would frame this like I would 100% just frame that I absolutely love it um, when I picked this up I thought the front was pretty as well it was like oh that's really nice but then I opened it and I was like oh I love it I would honestly I would frame this step back in my house like I think it's beautiful what historical romance new releases are you looking forward to is question number 12 so I only have two that I'm really super looking forward to because I am really bad at keeping track of when books come out I know that Eloisa James has one coming out that I am excited about Ella Quinn has one the most eligible Viscount in London that is gonna come out just a little bit later this year and I'm really excited about that I think that's gonna be a continuation of the most eligible Lord in London we met like three women three men and I think that's how it's gonna go so I'm excited to see how that one goes because I did really enjoy the most eligible Lord in London and then I know that Kerrigan Byrne has a new one out it might have just come out I think it's called the devil in her bed and I think it just came out so I will be reading that I'm just a little bit slow I rarely 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 ever read them as soon as they come out because I'm really slow about it so I probably read them within like a couple of months at best but I am looking forward to those. And as I see more, like that, you know, that list is always gonna be ongoing. All right, 13, the last question is, what creators do you follow for historical romance recommendations? So on YouTube, I follow Just From Peace Love Books. I follow Lacey Book Lovers. Chandler Ainsley occasionally has good historical romance recommendations. And then I also do Instagram a lot. So Virgo Reader on Instagram, read all the romance. Um, also pretty much all of the creators that I just mentioned for YouTube as well. Um, I plot trysts, um, introverted blue stocking is a good one that I 
will look through their pages and I mean there's so many really I also follow like hashtags so I follow like the step back Saturday and step back Saturday reveal hashtags I follow like historical romance novels historical romance readers all of those type of hashtags and I look through and then as I see books that look interesting to me or even photos that look interesting to me I just kind of grab those save them and usually follow the person but it's an ongoing process and then sometimes I will look through Goodreads reviews. If someone has like really similar taste to me in what I've already seen them post or like a review that I'm like, I literally was thinking that, I will usually follow them and look and see what other books that they've read that I might enjoy. So really I just get my recommendations from everywhere and I think that's fine. I don't have any one particular place that I go to to look. I just like kind of comb YouTube and Instagram and Goodreads and whatever to see if anyone has anything that I'm interested in reading. That is all the questions for this tag guys. I hope that you enjoyed it and I thought this was really fun. I think this is a really good tag because I haven't seen any other historical romance tags so I think that that's great. I love to talk about historical romance. That is all that I have for you guys today and I'll see you later. Bye!